Hi guys and welcome to my natural terrarium video. Now don't worry, this is not the final piece, that will be up in a little bit. I just want to let you guys know what's happened with my crested geckos, because last time you probably saw them, they moved in together. And that was actually last Thursday, and up until Sunday, they were doing alright. There was no fighting, but it's difficult to know if they're really happy. For example, when I moved in my two guinea pigs, they'll make chirping sounds or they would make a teeth chattering sound if they weren't happy and they interact with each other they seem to acknowledge each other whereas when I try to introduce the two girls it's almost like they just walked over each other if they ever came into contact and besides that they didn't talk to each other or anything and that's the thing geckos actually do have vocal cords and um, they can make sound if they want to I actually never heard it which is really annoying I've never heard a sound my geckos made I've had my leopard geckos make a sound before. Anyway, I'm straying away from the whole point. Basically, they weren't really interacting, so I couldn't really tell if they were totally happy. And then on Sunday, um, Isla was like flicking her tongue and got closer to my new crested gecko, then flicked her tongue and bit the new crested gecko on the head, like full jaw around the head. Which is so bizarre to see Isla do that because she won't even hunt a cricket. I've put a waxworm in front of her, she didn't even want it. It's crazy, but she'll bite a gecko. Anyway, so although my reaction may be a little fast, some people say, oh, don't worry, it's just dominance and all that. It's just I have two tanks and I want to provide the best life I can possibly provide for my geckos. And I don't want one being bullied. There's no point if I have two tanks I can put them in. So they were separated and this is where we are now. So Isla's fern in her natural tank actually died like a month ago. I don't think it could handle her jumping on it and it pretty much just died. So I brought her some new plants and today I'm finally doing the natural tank. So I got her a mother-in-law's tongue plant, also known as a snake plant, a dragon tree or a dragon plant, something called a polka dot plant they do have a long name uh, but the polka dot plant is like their nickname and although these can grow really well in terrariums they don't always do well with crested geckos because they can get trampled on a lot and they can die but they're really pretty they were only 99 pence each and she has so many other bigger things to jump on that I think that will distract her from jumping on the smaller plants. Let's just hope that anyway. So I thought I'll just give it a go. I also got these succulents, which are house leeks, and they're also called devil's teeth. You may know them as hens and chicks. They have loads of chicks and a few hens in there. And I'm going to split them up and put them in the terrarium as well. Obviously, as well, in the terrarium, I have Isla's bromeliad, which I would highly recommend because she absolutely loves it, and the wandering dew plants. So, with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and decorate this terrarium. My work is done. It does look quite full, I would agree with you with that one, but I do kind of like it because I think it gives Isla quite a variety of different plants she can climb on and it doesn't give one plant so much stress of the weight of a gecko on it all the time. So obviously I kept the bromeliad, I have the dragon plant or dragon tree in the middle. Now the great thing about this is even though they can technically get quite big, you can actually cut them down a little bit and they'll just get off a load more leaves and you can kind of bonsai them in a way you keep them small so I think that'll be kind of cool when that grows then obviously I have the snake plant which I'm sure Isla will have some fun on that because it's nice and sturdy then we got the polka dot plants underneath that I put the succulents underneath the bromeliad because Basically, they do like direct light, but they don't like a lot of water, so I figured that the bromeliad could kind of shield them from all the water. As for the air plants, if you remember in the last natural terrarium video, I bought loads and loads of air plants from ProRep. Yeah, they didn't do so well. I actually only have 
three left and I don't really know how well they're doing. So we have two in the background, they're all right. I haven't noticed them grow very much. And then I have one that's hanging upside down under the coconut to make a little squid coconut. Isla climbs on that all the time. I found her up asleep in it. It's definitely one of her favorite places to go. And the other coconut she actually really loves. I made that in a different video, how to make a coconut hide. And she's been asleep in that all day. And she absolutely loves that. So that's always a good sign. Also, you may have noticed I finally have a feeding ledge. I did have the Exoterra um, canopy, feeding canopy thing. But the self adhesive part just became unsticky and dropped into terrarium ages ago. Had to fix it with some Velcro. Even that, I wasn't a fan of it. It went kind of disgusting. And also, I had to put the milk lid in the water part and even then it wouldn't sit steady because it wasn't big enough it was just no i would not recommend it it's a shame because i usually like exoterra stuff but anyway i got this ledge and this is from geckodiet.co.uk you can get like a see-through one you can get a rock one it actually works out quite good that this is a see-through one because that means the plants underneath it don't miss out on any light it just travels straight through it the other great thing is it comes with two dishes and the dishes, are they dishes? Kind of bowls, I'm not really sure, but they're nice and wide so even if you had multiple geckos they could probably eat at the same time and uh, yeah, at the moment I actually have a milk lid inside the dish just because I made that up yesterday and I didn't want to throw it away um, and it's still kind of fresh and the other bowl has water in because although obviously you spray down the tank I find that Isla does drink from standing water so that is very handy as well so I am a big fan of this I actually got my other Cressa Gecko one as well so if you want one similar to that geckodiet.co.uk because I swear that's the only place you can find in the UK that sell it obviously in America you have Magnaturals but if you try to find that on Amazon it's like the only place I can find it costs like 60 or 70 quid it's crazy so I'd highly recommend this so I hope this video has been interesting I hope you've enjoyed it I certainly enjoyed doing up the tank and I'm sure I will do another one in the future because my other Crested Gecko will probably have a natural tank as well thank you very much for watching guys and goodbye